Welcome to Now That's Something Good, the podcast where we explore the extraordinary in the everyday ordinary. I normally would say, now here's your host, Sarah Good, but we'll get to Sarah in just a minute. This is Will here, and on behalf of Sarah and the whole Good family, I just want to say thank you for listening in. What you could do for us is to rate and review Now That's Something Good. And when you do that, that helps other people discover the podcast. Our vision behind Now That's Something Good is really helping other people understand that they're not alone. By hearing ordinary people's lives, like you and me, we're, we're kind of not celebrities, we're just ordinary people going about our lives, by hearing our stories, we're able to help other people understand that they're not alone and to bring some encouragement and see the evidence of how God is working in people's lives today. So thank you in advance for rating, for reviewing, or maybe for just picking a podcast that's really meant something to you, one of our episodes, and sharing that directly with a friend or a family member who could use encouragement. Now, on this episode and an upcoming episode soon here, we had the opportunity to record those on location in Virginia. I can't believe, and Sarah can't believe, that we have a daughter old enough to be a senior in high school and going on college visits. We did that recently to uh, Lynchburg, Virginia, and this episode was recorded on location there. So this episode, we're going to share one of our favorite formats, a format that we've wanted to really do for quite some time, and that's just some rapid-fire good things. So without further ado, here is Lillian, Sarah, and myself. Hope you enjoy this episode. Hey friends, welcome back to the show. Well, today you are in for a treat. You don't just get one good family member, not two good family members, but three good family members. Will, Lillian. Hello, it's Will. I'm on the podcast. Thanks for having me. This is Lillian. (laughs) You'll know all of her voices, Um, but we're here today. So here's the deal. This is something that's been on our heart and mind for a long time when we started the podcast. We love sharing good things, as you know, and good things come in a variety of packages and all kinds of formats and things. And as you've listened, you know, the last question that we ask every guest on our show is tell us something good. And so we love just sharing in good movies, pot, you know, sharing is caring really is part of it. And so we love you all so much that we just want want to share some of the good things that are happening in our life, some good things we found, whatever, yada, yada. So we're going to start that today. And honestly, we've, you know, we've always got an idea around here and we're always crafting something. I really should say I'm always crafting something. Will's just trying to keep up with all my shenanigans, right? It's hard to keep up with this girl. (laughs) Tell you what. (laughs) But I think we're going to make this a regular spotlight. So let us know how you feel about this and if you like it. But I think we're going to keep it a regular part of our podcast um, repertoire. And maybe throw in some random guests along the way to just wrap it up. That's a great idea. That'd be a lot of fun. So I'm going to come back and tell you more about that. But before we do this, we invited Lillian to be here. Lillian is the oldest good child of our family. Right, Lillian? Yep. And so she got to be on a podcast episode last year. Will, what episode number was it? Do you remember off the top of your head? Uh, no. Six, nine. Six, I can't tell you. There. We'll post it in the, the Go show back to notes. season one. Yeah, check it in out. In season one, Lillian shared all about turning 16. Well, it's been a year later. You just turned... 17. Which comes after 16, so that's good. We know our wow. number. <laughs> Turn 17. Cool. And Lillian, tell everybody, where are we at right now? We are in Lynchburg, Virginia, which is crazy. And why are we in Lynchburg, Virginia? Uh, we're here for a college visit, visiting Liberty University, which has been like my dream college for probably five or six years. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to hear that story for a minute. So we're just going to catch you up. Lillian shared with us last year on the podcast, and we're just going to do a little Lillian good life update, which we sure you guys, we know you guys are just dying to hear, but we are, we're in Lynchburg. We're actually sitting to be exact in the bird house (laughs) and our Airbnb, super cute little place in Lynchburg. We'll share with you in the notes. If you're ever coming up this way, you should stay in this really cute shout out to our uh, Airbnb hosts that don't even know who we are and don't know that we're recording in their. This is the second podcast episode we recorded in their home, but it's fun. So Lillian, okay, tell us. Some people don't even know what Liberty University is, so just give a little. Okay, well, it's a uh, college in Lynchburg. That's why we're here. Uh, really big, huge. I I really underestimated how huge it really was. Um, Christian University. So many cool things about it and like just even I was I was absolutely still obsessed I was absolutely obsessed with this place knew all all the details stalked all the youtubers who go here and like for the longest time and like as I'm coming here it's like so much more cool than I already thought it was it's just such a Christ-centered place which I always 
wanted to go to a Christian college. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a really, really cool place. So here's the deal. When she says obsessed, she means <laughs> literally obsessed. So the story goes back. I mean, how old were you? Eight, nine, ten? I feel like somewhere. I was pretty young, honestly. We went to a vertical worship band concert. If you don't know vertical worship, they've been around. They're part of Harvest Bible Chapel. Started a worship oh, group. Yeah. Is this where she got the sunglasses from? No, hold on. I don't think there were sunglasses. What? You got some kind of swag, and you were like all into okay, it, right? Hold on. Okay, sorry, I'm jumping wait, ahead. Wait, what? <laughs> so we're at this show. So we went. There was like a leadership thing beforehand. So I was there, and then Will and Lillian joined for the concert. And we're sitting there and Meredith Andrews is one of the worship mm-hmm. leaders. Meredith Andrews is an alum of Liberty University. Liberty University was part of the sponsor for the concert and the tour. So they had a big booth. And in the middle of the show, as most concerts, if you know, if there's like sponsors or whatever, they'll start talking a little bit about whoever is sponsoring them. And so they start talking about Liberty University and little Lillian <laughs> good at eight or nine years old was like got all of the brochures right you want to talk about this you want to tell the story do you remember yeah, you remember I this right i don't remember all of it i mainly just remember just like the one packet and like information thing that i actually still have like in a little box in my room <laughs> of course you do <laughs> so i just remember like literally read like i li- probably like memorized like all the facts in the book not probably, probably. let's be like, honest I, I you, definitely you did. did memorize every fact and i was like so excited She's like i only read old. it so many times <laughs> i looked up their website i was like i gotta do their school like i found like the liberty online academy i researched all their degrees i was like oh my gosh i researched all their residence halls like how much it costs i was like i'm gonna go here so <laughs> she really has known for years, like all about the school, been on our list of places. COVID slowed it down. We would have normally gone last year during her junior year to go visit the school, but needed to wait till this year. Mm-hmm. And here we are. They're supposed to do this thing called college for a weekend. COVID that. canceled that. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> but we're still here and it was great. And we did experience LU, which has been huge. And Lily, what's just one, one takeaway from your experience? Uh, I think the main takeaway. Obviously, I knew it was like a Christ centered school, but like once I was actually there, like I really felt God's presence. And even just in everyone we met, like the tour guides, even like the fellow potential students I met, like just so like genuine about their faith. And we were kind of talking about it earlier. Like it wasn't like a scripted, come here so we can get your money, all this stuff. It was like they genuinely like love Jesus and you could just show it in the way they're describing. Uh, their school and they talked about how the professors prayed for all their students before class by name and I thought that was so cool we saw so many students like I've never seen so many young adults and teenagers just like out reading their bibles like it seemed like a choice and like it was just so cool and we got to experience their convocation Friday morning and the worship was phenomenal and I'm I, I've just never seen so many like young people like raise their hands and worship and seem so genuine and it was just so like again, like the main thing was just really realizing how Christ centered and uh, purposeful, like it was, like the story behind all of it was. So yeah, definitely a real cool place. If you have a student in your life um, that is looking for something, I mean, they've got all kinds of degrees, but is looking to be in an environment that is a little um, Jesus focused, this would be a great place. We've had a really cool time, and you'll probably hear us talk about a few of our favorite things when it comes up here, but. So Lillian, it's been a year, so just catch us up. Anything else we need to know about your life right now in the last year? Um, well, I got a job, been writing more music. I mean, started senior year, school stuff. That's always fun. Um, yeah. It's been looking, obviously looking at the college stuff, graduation, what I want to do, all that fun stuff. So, I mean. Yeah. So Will and I are over here feeling all the feels of trying to figure out how, one, we're old enough to have a child who's a senior in high school, and two... Well, <laughs> period. How are we doing? So send us all of your senior year help, encouragement, any of the yep. things. If you are younger and don't have kids yet, just tell us what's something you love that your family did really well for you or something we need to know about senior year stuff. We will take all of the advice, encouragement, prayers, yada, yada, because 
Crazy. We're a little emotional over here. It's okay. I'm emotional. Everybody else is good, but it's fine. We're good. Okay. So let's jump in to the heart of this podcast episode, which is again, we're just going to share some good things. So what we did is we wrote some categories down on little pieces of paper here, and we're going to pull one and then one or all three of us will share something good from one of those categories. You guys understand? Everybody good? Woo. Will, I think Willie? I'm good. I think I'm good with that. Will, you want to pull the first one? Okay, here we go. I'm pulling the first one, and it says movie, TV. Okay, something good. I am a big Matrix fan, the Matrix <laughs> trilogy, and the Matrix oh 4 comes out Christmas Day 2021, and I am super excited to see the return of Neo and Trinity in the Matrix. Did you stage that one? How did you just happen? She <laughs> just like, boop. <laughs> I, I don't I was thinking about that. If there was a movie one, that was gonna be my oh answer. My so I was ready for that. Yeah. So I feel like we need we also talked about when we shared these things that everybody could get a free story pass that they get to elaborate on this. I'm trying to decide if I should use my story <laughs> pass to talk about something that happened the other night. Like when Will says he's excited, let's just back up a second. First of all, your license plate says I am Neo. <laughs> So when he says, I mean, he's low key, like obsessive about the matrix. The other night we're laying down, I'm dead tired. And Will's like, did you see the new trailer <laughs> for matrix? To be it wasn't clear, even the trailer. It was like it was the, the, trailer the teaser for the trailer. trailer, the teaser. And he was all, you were totally geeked out about this. Like you go and you can pick the red pill or the blue pill. And every trailer is different. I'm like, I'm Seriously, to be folks, a good wife. I just what so is the matrix.com? You push, you, you click which <laughs> pill you want to take. It's really fun. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it's phenomenal. You have to click one or both pills multiple times and you'll see what I mean. Okay, there you go. You heard it here first, people. Now that's definitely <laughs> something good. Lillian, you got a favorite movie or TV show, something recently you've seen, something good? Uh, we're still Gilmore, Gilmore Girls fanatics. Oh, yeah. So that's cool. We've been making it through that. Actually, well, on this trip, Okay, this is a funny we, story. You were like, I want to watch a funny romantic comedy. And, and I was then, like, yeah, I was about to say that. Okay, I'm here for it. But what movie, what classic movie did you just we watch? We watched Dear John. Oh, not that. Well, There's oh, another yeah, we did one. Watch oh, we watched Dear John and Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which like one of my best <laughs> friends introduced to me. I'm yes. actually obsessed. Ferris so Bueller's funny. Jeff. I will say, though, that movie has a lot more language in it than I remember, like, 80s. I really right. feel like every like 80s, 80s yeah. movie like, is just like, what, what happened thing? in the 80s? And you're like, what happened? There's With the rating. Was it only rated like PG, too, or something like that? I don't know. It's okay. funny. I don't really care because I live in a world of teenagers. That's that's just Fair their enough. language. But, but I'm still like, dude, I'm still like, wow, PG. was that okay for... It works. Okay, great. Uh, I don't know if I have a movie or TV. I probably have some of the same. Gilmore Girls. We're loving that. That's a fun. Yep. There's a category of movie, though. Maybe not a specific movie that probably that our podcast listeners already know about for you, Sarah. Well, that's <laughs> true, but we're off season. I am a home. I am a Hallmark movie fan. Judge me as you will. You'll hear a lot more about it at Christmas time. I'm sorry in advance. Just mute me on those episodes. No, I'm just kidding. We. My bucket list item is to be in a Hallmark Christmas movie. She wants to be like, in I want to be an extra. A movie. Yes. Yes. So if you got any Hallmark Christmas movie connections, if you got any hookups, hit me up. I would love send them our way. to be an extra in the movies. Anyway, we'll talk about that more later. Something good. Okay, Lillian, your turn. Pick a category. Something Ooh. good. Something good. Okay. What do we got? Bible verse. Bible Woo! verse. Okay, yeah. This okay, is I good. I screenshotted one. So share a v- Bible verse, something stuck out, something good. Who's going to go for it? You got one, Lil? Yes. This one is cool. I don't want to say it's in my favorite Bible verse, but... Um, favorite, just one. One you're like... It's right cool. Now. This is a very conviction, like, hit on the head. Uh, it's Jude chapter 1, mm-hmm. verse 23. Rescue others by snatching them from the flames of judgment. Show mercy to still others, but do so with great caution, hating the sins that contaminate their lives. That just kind of reminded me how much we need to help our people, especially our community and friends, and quote unquote, snatch them up from the flames of judgment and protect our people. Okay, that's good. What is it? Jude? Jude chapter one, verse 23. Awesome. Well, uh, just from reading plan this week, 2 Corinthians 6, 8. We serve God whether people honor us or despise us, whether they slander us or praise us. We are honest, but they call us imposters. Imposters is funny because that's a big thing from our Among Us episode. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Not related, Sus. though. 
totally sus. But no, for real, just the whole idea of um, Paul, who's talk, writing about himself and his cohort, they're serving God. It doesn't matter what people's reaction are to them. They're just choosing, hey, we're going to be faithful in preaching the truth. God's power is working in us. We use rep weapons of righteousness. This is in the verse before, but we're just, it doesn't matter what people do. We serve God because that's what we're supposed to do. And uh, that's a good word for everybody to hear who follows Jesus. I love it. So one I highlighted, we have been, um, like Will said, our reading plan, our church has been reading through the New Testament this year. And so this was back from last week. We were in 1 Corinthians, and now we're, we're in 2 we're in Corinthians today? Second, yeah. Um, so this is what I'm going to read it to you in two versions that really stuck up to me, stood out to me. So this is 1 Corinthians 15, 58. It says, so my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. I love that imagery of immovable, like stand firm, don't lose your ground. And listen to this one, same verse, 1 Corinthians 15, 58 in the message version. It says, with all this going for us, my dear, dear friends, stand your ground and don't hold back. Throw yourselves into the work of the master, confident that nothing you do for him is a waste of time or effort. And that's a great word because some of you out there right now might feel like you're doing things, you're spinning stuff, and you don't know how God's using it, if he's using it, you don't know if any if it's counting, but this reminds us that we can be confident that nothing we're doing, nothing that happens, nothing that God's called us to, nothing that he's moving is ever useless or wasted. He is using it in some way, shape or form. And that is definitely something good. That's something good. Come on. Okay. My turn. Let's see. Something from the the little pile. If you could see our little pile. Drum roll. Oh, okay. This was one we wrote, like, what is a good, um, Lily used the word influencer, but we would just say like social media account, something that you follow that's bringing you just spreading the something good vibes out there. Anybody got one to share? I I've been uh, following James Clear. He's the author of Atomic Habits, which is a pretty cool book, and he has a free email newsletter. I'll post in the show notes if you want to sign up for that, but he has some really cool uh, things that he says, inspirational quotes and, and uh, from himself and then from other authors as well. James Clear. Love it. Lillian, you got one? I got one. It's a, a young adult girl. I don't know how you say her last name, but it's Allie Yarid, A-L-L-Y. Y A R I D. We'll link it in the show notes. Yeah. She's really cool. Um, she has, she talks, she's a Christian. She talks a lot about hard topics and like harder topics from a Christian perspective, which is really cool to look at. So do with that as you will and go check her out. She's pretty cool. I love it. Mine is a throwback to season one. We had our really good friend, Christy Bulwer on, who is the founder and president of Fearless Women. They are just producing a lot of amazing content, a lot of great encouragement. I have to give them a shout out. It is one of my favorite ones that I just see through my newsfeed and I'm like, Ooh, that's really good. Um, she's Christy's also gotten into reels, which <laughs> I think is hilarious. Like it's not amazing. That it's, just, it's so fun. And so they've been putting them out there and she gives a lot of tips and tricks on just anxiety. Anxiety, worry, fear, which let's be honest, whether we have like a diagnosis of anxiety, we mm-hmm. all deal with fear, worry, anxiety. And so it is a great, and whether you're, you don't have to just be a woman to follow it. Like anybody can follow it's it. Good. It's applicable yeah, it's good across the board. Sure. Will follows it. So mm-hmm. it's I think great. what you're saying is Christy's the real deal. Is that what you're saying? She is the real deal. <laughs> no, but follow Fearless Women, STL.com. Oh, dad my joke. It is but a dad sh- joke. That's not good. That's not something good. Oh, come on, Lily. <laughs> Wasn't that good? That was no. good. Okay, it was well, good. Turn. Lillian <laughs> says it was good. good. We got a lot of these in here. Okay. Next one for me is books. Ooh. Books. Oh, yeah. Books. Reading. Let's share some books. Who, I want to know all you listening. Like, are you guys book readers? We'll have to put some stuff out in our social this week or leave us a comment on the post when this airs. Like, are you like, what do you, are you guys bought books? Um, obviously, if you're listening to this, you're a podcast listener. Oh, why don't you write down podcast? Add that for next time. <laughs> She's going to add it right now. Of course, everyone around this table, if I put podcast, you should all <laughs> oh, say, now that's something good. there's only one choice. That's something yeah. good. Just kidding. <laughs> books, to, uh, honest COVID era, I've slowed down reading and consuming content a lot. My brain just can't handle it. The last best book I think that I read that really made an impact on me that I recommend quite a bit is a tiny little book called Outcomes Over Output. It's by Josh Seiden. It's more of a sort of, um, if you're in leadership in nonprofit or, or uh, the business world, anything like that, it's a fantastic little read. You can uh, get it on Amazon. We'll put the, the link in the show notes, but outcomes over output. And it really just talks about 
Uh, what's more important in the things that you do is what the result is in terms of other people's behavior and how they interact with it. It's not just enough to measure your success of uh, uh, the thing that you produce. It's more of the effect of the thing that you produce, how that affects the world around you. It's good. Lillian, you've been, you read I, a lot of school books, so you might I know, be a pass I'm, on this. Since I'm a senior and basically a college student, taking all the college classes, I'm kind of swarmed by only textbooks. But I actually do have a weird... I have a textbook to rec- recommend. It doesn't Perfect. really feel like a textbook. It honestly feels very scholarly scholarly and cool. Um, oh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get the two mixed up because I have two. I'm taking it's two right. worship classes right now. We can link it right in now. the show notes, so just give us your best guess I on believe one. it's called A True Call to Worship okay. by Vernon, Vernon M. Whaley. I forget if it's Vernon W or Vernon M, but it's one of those. I'll find it. I'll link it. Very spiritual. Talks about worship a lot, just from a lot of different perspectives. And I think it was really cool and kind of just like fell out of my minds of new reminders and ideas. So it was really cool. Okay. So a book on worship. Anybody could probably read it and get something else just about worshiping in general. Awesome. I love it. So I, I really love to read. Um, I do. And it's hard because in this season it's crazy, but I also got a confession. I'm like a half book reader. I am notorious for, okay, I should say on nonfiction books, starting them and be like, Ooh, I want to read this. I hear all this stuff and like buy the book. Then, oh. I read about a quarter to a third of the way through. I don't even know if I get halfway through some of them. I'm like, okay. And then I kind of skim, which I mean, sometimes I feel like with those nonfiction books, like there's really great stuff in it. And I shout out to all those authors hustling and making good words. I'm sure every word is really important. Um, but sometimes I'm like, okay, get, get to the gist of the book. And I just need, I need the highlights. Um, but I am rereading and I plan to read every book of this, every page. Um, it is fresh wind, fresh fire by Jim symbol, Cymbala, however you say his name, Cymbala, however, which way you want to go. It is an older book. He originally wrote this away a long time time ago. And it was from, he's in New York and the Brooklyn Tabernacle Church. And they've written this whole, um, he just shares their journey. It's an incredible story of him telling what God did in and through um, their church and a lot to do about prayer. And there's just been so many quotes and so many things in there that I've been highlighting. I read the book, I mean, back in high school, whenever it first came out. It's a classic now. It is a classic and it's been revised and updated and it's just been really cool to read it literally like Mm -hmm. 20, 20 years later. I hate to say that, that that's been that long, but 20 years later, um, and just really about prayer, um, um, about just these really cool stories of what God did with the people who were just desperate for mm-hmm. him. Yes. So I would honestly, hands down, highly encourage you to read that book. It's a really quick read. It's an easy read. Even if you're not like a big avid reader, they also have it on audiobook and we're big audiobook fans too. So if you just need a shout out for something good, get those, get an audiobook, listen to it in the car, makes it easier. Love it. Okay. Lillian, you're next. Pick something, pick another next category. Ooh, yes. Something good. Oh, something good episode. Ooh. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what has been your favorite now that something good episode or one that just stands out to you? We've had a lot I... of great, we're on like episode. Well, what episode are we on? Wow. Hold on. We're, like, we're on 35, season two, like... 36, somewhere in there. Crazy. Ooh. Lillian, do you have a favorite I one? really liked our, oh, where are we going? We were going somewhere. We're in the car and we were re- re-listening to uh ron and debbie's episode and it was i hadn't listened to it sadly before and i was just dying because of the stories they're telling they're very sweet and uh it was it was i I love that episode they're funny so (laughs) we'll link it in the show notes that one if you have not listened ron and debbie ron is the pastor Uh, of the church that i work at and we love them they've been married they just celebrated 30 years of marriage this past february and they share it is i will say there was a two-parter i believe we split it into two parts and their episodes have been some of our most (laughs) listened to downloaded episodes it's just really good they share a lot of wisdom that's a great one Will, what about you? What's one that stands out to you? Oh boy, that's really, really tough because they each have a unique. I know um, you can't pick a favorite sure. piece, you know. Yeah, which is which is so tough to to really 
narrow that mm-hmm. down. So do you know? Because I can share mine if you want to go. Go ahead. I'm I'm so thinking about that. Here's one, and we're just going to share a little backstory. And I'm not going to share too much of the story, and we'll share it. But one that stands out to me most recently is our good friend Mike Bulwer. He was episode um, four or five, one of our very first ones. He was the first episode yeah. that we ever recorded on location. We did it at Woody's Beach, um, and Mike has been fighting cancer. And without going into a whole lot of the story, his battle is um, kind of coming to an end here. And so we've been praying for their family and along with them and would encourage you to join us and just praying for the whole Mike Bulware family. But he shares just some incredible nuggets. He is one of the most down to earth people you will ever meet and has just a way of sharing about his faith and just stories in general that will just encourage you. So if you mm-hmm. have not listened to the story with Mike Bulware, highly encourage you. It is one that will forever stand out in in my mind, just a lot of great things. Mm-hmm. Will? Yeah, uh, that's good. He's episode eight, and I think Liliana was nine, just so you know, from first uh, first season. I just looked that up. And then for me, I think, uh, even though so many good ones, I really appreciate Maria Granados. Mm. And the, the kind of subtitle for her episode is when, in air quotes, you are enough is not enough. And Maria talks a lot about how all of our strength, everything that we have is just not enough in and of itself without God's presence in our life. And that's a theme through most of our guests. I know specifically for the Granados family in the last season of their lives, they've needed something extra and they're just a living testimony how God has come through for them. So if you don't follow them on social, check out uh, Maria's uh, episode. It's it's episode 13 and that links are, are all there. And then we also interviewed her husband, Matt, as well in uh, season one, episode 11. So th- they've got some really cool story and a great testimony of how our enough really is not enough. Really good. Okay. We got time for a couple more on the something good list this time around. So my turn. Ooh, food. Okay. Favorite food, place, restaurant, something good that we are loving right now. This is a great question. We've actually been in Virginia. I feel like we need to share. We can't share everything, not local, but who wants to go first? Lillian, you got something? Okay. Um, I have a feeling what y'all might talk about you can potentially. So I'll just say <sighs> this is like really random. When we visited Liberty and saw like their huge like food hall, they had so it's like legit a mall food court it was in the like middle a mall of this. Food court. I don't I even felt like I was at the mall. So many different things, like a salad bar, a whole we have allergies. I have an allergy. So like they had a whole allergy station. Yeah, that was amazing. It was actually pretty good. They had like an omelet bar, a whole bakery i'm pretty sure like a sushi place mediterranean food so many different things just crazy and i was overwhelmed and their omelets was really good so wow i was amazed okay can we just shout out to omelet bars in general we were just saying like i think how come nobody has made an omelet bar restaurant like really why is that not a thing like let's do it somebody write that down that's a million dollar (laughs) idea for somebody like that when we go to those all inclusive resorts or we've been places and they have the omelet station so good it's always a lot what else do you really need favorite thing it's so good so omelets for the win hands down (laughs) something good for Mm -hmm. the whole good group Will, what's a favorite food, restaurant, place recently that you've... Anything stand up? I have not really been restauranting very much lately. I'm, I think I'm just you still... You like to make stuff at home. What I, you like, make? I like to make things at home. I'm just becoming more and more of an avocado fan. And so even though I might <laughs> sound like bougie or like, uh, you know, bougie. some some uh, woman from San Diego or something, I really <gasps> enjoy avocado <gasps> toast with some good stuff on it. Sorry about that Sorry to all of it from San Diego. Anybody like, can love you, avocado toast. East, East Coast super mom we, or something, we are, but we all do avocado like toast avocado pretty good. Toast. Yep. And okay, speaking of avocados, we just found out that apparently September 16th with the Jasso Lillian's birthday was Blo- National Guacamole, Guacamole Day. Day. Who how? knew? Yeah. We apologize, something we good this. fans, that we did not I'm share that sooner with you. I'm sorry this didn't come out earlier because you needed to know <laughs> that. Best holiday. Known. Next, hey, remind us, message us, remind us next year. Uh, yeah, you know, September around 16th, August. Guacamole Day. September 16th. That's definitely something good. So here's something we love, and it's coming more to the St. Louis area, and I'll tell you this story some other time, but 
We recently, so we do mm. live in the St. Charles area and wherever you're from, we love smoothie bowls. Like we just always have, there's something really good about them. And we just found out from another podcast guest that you'll hear her podcast airing soon, that there is a new one in the St. Charles area. And then we were here in Lynchburg and I was like, we got to find a smoothie bowl. Play. Like we just, we, we are, well, I should say Will and I, Lillian eats fairly healthy. We just healthier, fresher stuff. And the hardest part with traveling, one, when you have food allergies, and two, when you just don't want to eat fast food all the time. Right. Um, we just, it's hard. And we enjoy getting to eat out and trying fresh things and new things. And so it's sometimes hard. To, and smoothies always seem to be great. And so we mm-hmm. found this really, shout out to Millie's Living. Millie's right? Living. Living Cafe when you something. come yep. to Lynchburg, Virginia, go check them out. It was so great. We actually have gone there twice because we liked it so much. <laughs> And got the smoothie bowls. Um, I got a PB and J one that was really good. They I switched it out yeah. for almond butter because um, I'm a I love peanut butter, but I prefer almond butter on a smoothie. I don't mm-hmm. know what to mm-hmm. think. Will, what did you? You got some chocolate. I got like a cacao uh, smoothie today. Yep, it's pretty good. And yep. Lillian, you tried? I tried two different things. I tried a dragon uh, bowl oh, the other day, oh, mm-hmm. and then I also did a riptide, which was like bananas, pineapple, a little bit more, I, right, or something. Yeah, yeah. something like that. It's good. Anyway, yeah. we're going to come smoothie bowl man. Like you can make them at home. We make a lot of smoothies at home. <laughs> it's getting okay. Side note, right? It's getting the consistency yes. of this because it's it's got to be thicker, really, than like mm-hmm. a traditional yep. smoothie. And we have a really expensive <laughs> blender, <laughs> but you have to put so much liquid in it that it doesn't get it the right consistency. And we actually really prefer our little. Neutral, neutral bullet. bullet. Yep. Yeah. Does the best ones. But then for a family of six, which all of our family loves to do that, you're making, you're just making a lot of smoothies. You're, which, you it's know, a little, a little else we have. Anything yeah. we do with a family of six is just kind of crazy. Anyway, shout out for the smoothie bowls. We would love to hear what smoothie bowls you like or what's your favorite smoothie The secret recipe. ingredient has to be the acai or acai, depending acai. on how you, it's a, it's a Brazilian acai. superfood, super great. True story. The first time I had acai, never even heard of it. I was in Brazil. This is years ago, traveling with work, and I actually was on a walk in a park. Imagine that. I'm always walking when I go places, and they had this little place where you could order these things, and I was like, I'll take that thing in, in Portuguese, which I don't speak, and they gave it to me. Acai bowl. <laughs> that Fantastic. That it's like what really... we had uh, in t- yesterday and today. Yeah. yeah. Blue good. Berlina. Good. That's a good, good. addition into Blue's your- Blue Berlina, story. Definitely. Anyway, smoothie kind of stores. Okay, that's great. Okay, we've probably got time for one or two more. Who's Will? Pick one. I think it's my turn now. Let's see. What do we have here? Musica. Oh, Musica. Music. A good one. Okay, what's on the playlist right now that we are listening to that we would say is something mm-hmm. good? Will, what's on your your playlist these days? Yes, on my playlist. I've been listening to a lot of uh, Hillsong United and uh, Taya, Taya stuff, but there is one song in particular. It's As You Find Me, Taya, Taya. As You Find Me. It's a little bit older, Hillsong United live song. I think it's David Ware and, and Taya and, and the Hillsong team, but it's just super, super cool. Um, the, the whole idea is that God loves us as he finds us, but he loves us too much to leave us where he found us which is really profound. And it's just been speaking to me a lot as you find me. I'm sorry. I'm laughing because I have a really eclectic. (laughs) It's got like, I got really weird. When destiny's child survivor shows up in the middle of your playlist, you know, you've got a little bit of interesting right next to the peace Bethel album next to lady a and Waymaker. And then a little Brett Eldridge, like you're all over the place. My music tastes a little lady. Yeah. I'm not as mixed as you are. Um, so a couple songs that I am really, so of a spiritual worship na- nature, we really like that Fresh Wind um, by Hillsong Worship mm-hmm. it yeah. is really great. The I'm What loving. a Beautiful Medley or just the no, straight I up like, one? Well, both of them are good, but just the original Fresh Wind is a great song. Love 100%. that. Been listening to a lot of songs. House of Miracles, Brandon Lake. Um, Wait for You from Elevation in their old church basement album. Mm-hmm. Really, really love okay. that. Um, Belonging Co. has a version of Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus that is, I mean, can we, Natalie Grant, if you have not, that girl, I do not understand how she sings like that. But <laughs> makes me so mad. It's really good. <laughs> of another nature, I'm not going to lie, I'm a big Lady A fan <laughs> and I might be pumping. Oh, no. I might have gone on a little country music okay. the last few weeks. Like, <laughs> when I come out to the front porch and Sarah's rocking on the, you know, the, the know, swing with country blaring, that's kind of a fun summer thing. summer has just felt like the vibe of She's a little got the vibe. country yep. music, front porch swing, sitting there. It just seems like it's a vibe. I've been I've been in it. Okay, Lil, what have you been listening to? Wow, I definitely like 
uh, Maverick City. They have a concert coming here, and I'm so mad I can't get tickets. But they're so good. I love like the real thing. Uh, wait for you, all that stuff that they've gotten to do. Um, Never Lost from Elevation oh. Worship is good, but specifically the one that Torin Wells specifically the Sarah to. Good version. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, but, <laughs> and then, oh, what else was I going to say? Uh, we do this Speak to the Mountain song. I forgot who it's by. Chris McClarney. Chris McClarney. Yeah, he, yep, yep. So good. There's this guy at our church mountain. who sings it who's just phenomenal. And then I'm I'm a teenager. I got to like some things that aren't necessarily Christian can, based. Like, I just told you we, to listen we to listen Lady to, I, to Ben yeah. Platt's Reverie in the car, and it was fantastic. Really so enjoyed that. Good. Yep. So the lyrics are so deep, and don't worry, I don't relate to any of them, but so good i love it okay <laughs> what else okay we've also been so partly in our musical genre if you're in our house is usually going to include some kind of musicals so Woo! lillian what were we listening to also on the car we had we're a very long to, car ride to newsies that's yes. what i'm doing this year in She's theater be doing that and so we we're listening down the newsies which should be a movie that we said if you have not seen the newsies which i am shocked people, iconic how many people it have is not quite seen iconic the newsies the Disney old, movie yeah like it's christian it's, bale right. like at his finest i have no like, idea s- like yeah. 16 years old or something oh, yeah. bill Coleman. <laughs> Bill Is it Bullman? I don't know. I, Someone who's Oh, cute. gosh. We're going to have to Google search that right now. Will's going to look it up. It's it. Like, it's <laughs> so good. If you've not seen that movie, it's a classic. <laughs> we got to go back. That needs to be on your something good list to Please, watch. yes. The Newsies. And then the Broadway Ooh. version is way different. Um, Will and I actually, fun fact, got to see it was the first Broadway show I ever saw was Newsies in New York. Amazing. <laughs> so mm-hmm. good. It's really good. So yep. we're actually really excited that Lily's Theater Company she's a part of is doing Newsies this year. It'll be mm-hmm. great. Mm-hmm. Okay. We got time for one more. Lily, pick it out. What are you? Oh, I want to get a good one. Something good list. If you don't like it, no one will know, and we can just change it. <laughs> just, yeah. kidding. just kidding. This is the real places. 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 That's a great one. Hmm. Something good. Place. Moment. I mean, we're sitting in the middle of one. Sheesh. I feel like. Um. Yeah. Lunch burger has been awesome. Uh Yeah. If you ever need like a little. It's such an such eclectic a, kind of place. Like like, random, I don't know, there's all kinds of There's things. so many like random we were in downtown hole in the wall like little birthday. places. Like whoa. Um I'm trying to think of a I've already talked about this sort of though. I'm trying to think of another place. Okay. Let's see. Ah uh, Let me hop in and yeah. help you out. I'm gonna go a different direction. Uh recently I got a chance to go to northern Minnesota uh and uh, one of our daughters was able to join us on that trip, and she was the fifth generation, along with a nephew, fifth generation fishing really in this cool. little um, resort called Williams Narrows in northern Minnesota. It was super cool. Uh, fun fun time with my dad and brother, too. That's cool. Fishing trip, next generation, that's something good. Yeah, Do something. definitely something good. A lot of nature time. Make fishing. some memories. Yep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Lil, did you think of something? Oh, no. Writer, really writer's anywhere. block. <laughs> We got, we go all kinds of places. We've been, um, a place that stands out. You know what? Here is, this is going to be, well. You just went to a special place three days ago on our way here to Virginia that I can't believe either one of you didn't mention. (laughs) We did go to this special, very magical place Special is, I'm using air quotes. Santa Claus, Indiana. If you have it's never been to Santa Claus, Indiana, and you are anywhere year. in the vicinity traveling through the Midwest, you you need to go. It's worth the stop. Lily and I may or may not have t- <laughs> totally free. It's all for the fun, right? You guys know that yeah. I'm, if you've been listening, I'm a huge Christmas fan. I have passed that down to all of my children. They all know. I mean, like, <laughs> they love Christmas stores. When we were in Tennessee last year, they were all freaking out because we had to go in the Christmas store. I mean, like, it's a big... We we love all things Christmas, mm-hmm, everything, mm-hmm. all of it. We're here for every single second of the whole thing. And I yes, I will be decorating Woo. my house November first. For uh, sure, you have to when you have that many decorations, you guys have. That's a whole other episode that we'll talk about. But we did go to Santa Claus, Indiana. <laughs> there was um, all kinds of little stores. There's all the Santa Claus was like around. Sad moment was they apparently the real Santa Claus was there the real dude, and guys. we didn't get to miss him. I'm a little having FOMO. We about didn't get that to visit. Situation. Yeah, we didn't yeah. get to visit the real Santa Claus. But that's okay. We also found this really cute little store. I wish boutique, I could remember yeah. the name. The, whatever Go to the Santa Claus, Indiana. Yeah. It was really cute. I can't remember what it was called now. But it had like really cute clothes. It was not Christmassy yeah. stuff in there. It was just like boutique style clothes. The ladies scored some goods. We did. We found some really Ooh. good stuff. So if you're driving and you're going on a road trip, stop in Santa Claus, Indiana. It's yep. worth the little stop. 
just to bring you a little Christmas spirit to your travel and <laughs> vacation. Lil, did you think Truth. anything or just going to pass? Uh, I like Disney World. I'm <laughs> hoping. <laughs> that's a great place it's the most I magical place on earth like, speaking of magical places disney world is on the I list i want to go there next year so we'll see you guys yeah <laughs> so that is a little fun thanks for joining with us on the just random shout outs of something good things that have been happening um in our world and we would love to hear from you guys share something good with us maybe it's a product maybe it's a food maybe it's a place maybe your memory a story podcast song whatever we love all sharing and good things because our heart around here is there's a lot of good things going on and something that we've been talking a lot about. I put a post out a few weeks ago and I feel like in the last few weeks, God has just been reminding us that um, we can sometimes have hold such a tension of really hard things and really good things. And sometimes when there's really hard things going on in our world or in our life, sometimes we can lean into this mode like where it feels bad to see good things or to have joy. And we have been learning in this last season more than ever that joy and sorrow can reside in the same place. Yes. Good and hard can reside in the both same place. Fear and faith can reside in the same places. It's a matter of which voices are you going to allow to be louder. And so even when we are putting on a lens to see good things, that is not meaning that we are not well aware of really hard things that are happening right. and some of your stories listening in our world, but it means we're going to choose to let the loudest voices and the things most seen um, come through a lens and a filter of good yes. and choosing to see those things. And again, that's not negating. It's not ignoring the hard. We have to sit with those things too. And we do, but we believe that you can walk in the tension and that actually God does a crazy thing that the sorrow and the joy both can be experienced even deeper when you have been on both sides. And because of the deep sorrow that we have to walk through sometimes in this life, we are ex able to experience joy even deeper and richer. And so that's definitely been something true in this season as we're learning that, man, we can have really high moments and there's really good things going on. And then we turn around and we're having to walk through some really hard things mm -hmm. with people. Um, and we are grateful for a God that allows us to, to have all the in-betweens. And so wherever you're at today, whether you're maybe in the middle of some more hard moments, or maybe you're in the middle of more of the high moments, we are praying um, for you and thinking of you and hoping that God would continue to feel close and near um, and that he would allow you to see some things, even in the hard, that would just remind you that he is good and there is good and we can celebrate those things together. Now that's something good. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a great week. We'll see you back here next for a new episode of Now That's Something Good. Adios.